I'm somewhat familiar with that reality. Uh, I have a six-year-old, and uh, I know you have you have one or two. Two. I've got a. Uh, our daughter's almost nine, and son just turned five earlier this month. Yeah, and uh, part of the reason why the interview is at the time that it is, you might imagine. So my son, yeah. So he's the, this is the this is the earliest time that I could guarantee that he would be sleeping. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's uh, <laughs> that's pretty much how that I goes. Know that, I know that drill, man. I know that drill. I'm fortunate that I was able to, you know, pass those duties off to my wonderful wife this evening. Um, but you know, mm -hmm. and say goodbye. I mean, because I'm I'm on the West Coast, so right. So I'm it's a little earlier going. for you. A little earlier, but yes, the the game the game changes and everything, you know, uh, rotates around an entirely different son once you start it, no you know that's a bad way to put it but you know what i mean like not son as in boy but just once you have a kid your whole world is now or reoriented around a different centrifugal force you know i didn't i didn't realize how i mean i always wanted to be a dad but i didn't realize how it how profound a change you know it would be not not not, not I'm not saying uh, like I'm not still myself and I'm, you know, I, you know, I, I still am doing music for a living. So, right. I mean, that that part is it's not like my identity is different, but my perspective has been so drastically changed, like uh, and it's made it much easier for me to uh, prioritize um, and you know, some stuff that I was really hung up on just doesn't seem like it's a big deal anymore. Um, one of the things, and of course I still have aspirations, a lot of goals, things that I'm working towards, but I also have this sense that as long as uh, much of what I've learned, I'm, I'm able to pass it on to my son then I, you know, I, I feel like I'm okay. You know, I, I, you know, I still have this drive, but I don't have a, um, it's not as painful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. No, I know. It's, it, it, um, it's one of those things that it, it's such a cliche, like be becoming a parent. I mean, I think in the majority of cases, you know, where somebody willingly and wantingly becomes a parent, let's just right, right, that right. way. Um, and and I say that meaning like in your heart. I I, I meaning uh, how can I put this? I, I, I we delayed having kids, or I delayed for a while because I was terrified. I knew I wanted a child, you know, or children, but I was terrified of like how it would possibly work without killing my career aspirations. I just didn't see how the how it would happen. So I was delayed, 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 you know. And it was like eventually. You know, I think it was my father-in-law probably was like, you know, you're never going to be ready. If you don't want to have them, that's fine. You know, if that's your decision, but just know that like you, you don't just get to a point where you're ready. Or if you do, it might be too late. You know, by yeah, the time everything I, figured out. Yeah, I was talking to my dad about this and he said, you don't have kids because you're ready for kids you have kids because you want them yeah yeah and you know thinking thinking back about that you know yeah that's i mean because you, you know you're you're never going to have enough money you're never going to have you know, i mean there's always going to be stuff that you have to sacrifice and push around but it's i mean it's so worth it it ends up being so worth it that you know it's not even a big deal uh and i try to think of what my life would be like without that sort of anchor yeah now um and it's actually kind of frightening because it occupies so much space in the good way yeah it's so much space um you know i think people yeah. who who um you know especially maybe especially musicians can but mm. uh you know or, or people who are really kind of um i mean 
I'm going to say self-absorbed and I mean that in a, in a good way, in a healthy way. Like you're, you have to be self-absorbed to do this. There's just, what else are you going to call it? To sit in practice room for hours upon hours, year in, year out. Right, and, right, right, right. Um, so it can be especially, um, it can seem especially challenging, I think, if you're in that lane to, to, to imagine what having a child would be because you only see it as uh, subtracting from what, is taking place in your life already, you know? Uh, and, but you may, like you mentioned, you learn to restructure things in ways that you wouldn't have otherwise. I mean, that's certainly what I found, you know, re be better about your managing everything, your time and certain things immediately become, that seem so important are no longer important and you're fine with that. And other things that you didn't even know about are now more important and you just reallocate, rebalance and, but, when you when that hap when that moment happens and the child arrives and that's when your your entire world changes and that's the cliche like everybody can tell you that and there's no way to be prepared for it unless you go through it right, right. as right. my i think uh, it was my father-in-law said the same thing too when we were in the hospital with our first when our daughter was born it was like it's amazing it's it's singularly like we're, when you're in the hospital too the most like personal profound moment and also the most like basic regular like you yeah you and other people, <laughs> you know what i mean 